so the first, um, I was going to ask you what the first Spider-Man movie was, and most of you probably would have thought Sam Raimi. No, it was Three Dev Adam, which is a Turkish movie that translates to Three Strong Men. And uh, this was not licensed, though, so it wasn't, which obviously it's Turkish, you probably already figured that. Um, it was, it had Captain America, Spider-Man, and, oh, oh, Santos, the Mexican wrestler Santos. And Spider-Man was actually the, the villain of the movie. And um, it had, they, he was counterfeiting. I never really understood watching the film, like while doing the book, I didn't quite understand what he was counterfeiting, whether it was dollars, lira, peso. He was counterfeiting something though. Because it's like, why is Santos here? I guess, and they explain, he's like, they're, they're sending the money to Mexico. And then you're like, so are they counterfeiting Mexican money? Why are they moving? I don't know. But, uh, so Santos comes with Captain America and Captain America's girlfriend, and they come to fight Spider-Man. Um, <clears throat> there are some great uh, scenes in there. You can, like, just YouTube if you're interested. Um, like, they have some really bizarre... Um, they're like, they're trying to kill someone. They put up, like, bury him in the sand. They have the propeller, like, from the boat. They, that's how they kill him. And there's another scene where he uses a uh, death by gerbil. <laughs> that was, uh, so if you, honestly, I would not suggest anyone watch it. I know it's the kind of thing some people might like if they're into the quirky, weird. You know, you might think, oh, that sounds great. <laughs> but there, there are a lot of videos that will probably, you know, on YouTube, you can like search it and you can just see like snippets and save yourself a lot of trouble. Uh, you don't, you probably won't get as much. There are some scenes like, you know, people do the YouTube channel and talk about uh, the individual. There's certain parts that get mentioned all the time, like the gerbil death. Uh, but there are some other scenes that are like really still awkward that are almost, you know, with no one mentions. Um, like there's a really weird sex scene. I don't think anything um, like it's, I think it's PG thirteen ish sex type, but they have like bobblehead dolls that are like watching like this weird stuff. You're like, what the heck is happening? This is really odd. Um, they don't normally mention that in the YouTube videos. They might just be like, oh, there's a gerbil and Spider Man's evil, and it's actually weird to even understand. Honestly, I couldn't even understand for sure all of what was happening at times because of translation issues. You're like. Did, did Spider-Man die and he has powers to come back from the dead? Or are there clones of spot What's go like, he seems to die a bunch and come back and you're like, I'm not really sure what's happening here. Um, so anyway, that's uh, Three Dev Adam or Three Strong Men or just Turkish Spider-Man. That's probably, the, probably what you can find Googling or uh, on YouTube. Uh, but then uh, there was actual licensed movies after that that were legit, before the Sam Raimi films. And uh, the first one was just Spider-Man. It was a made-for-TV movie. It was a uh, backdoor pilot. I was talking, you weren't here, but we are talking about the Spider-Man TV show. So I had to show everybody. There. Uh, that could even be from the movie, I'm not sure. Uh, but it was a backdoor pilot. Uh, they started with the made-for-TV movie. I gave them a little more money to start with, and they were also able to use a lot of the stuff for the TV show. Like, oh, good, we got more money to make better effects, so we keep using the same effect over and over in the TV show. And they saw they did really good in the um, the ratings. They did great, so they're like, oh, good, we, we did it good. People liked it. It's worth doing a TV show. So they had. Uh, so do you guys know about the show? Are you you familiar with the show? Uh, the TV, the 70s Spider-Man. Yeah, I saw yeah. It a, a couple episodes. Gosh, I haven't seen it in <laughs> so long. But. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so you already know a little bit about it then. Uh, it was only two seasons, and they were truncated seasons. Uh, but it pretty much was like one normal season <laughs> if you combine the two. Hello, you guys can come in. Are you here for Spider-Man? It looks like somebody back there looks like he's into Spider-Man. That's good. Like, uh... So anyway, so we're just talking about the 70s show. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll uh, fast forward a little bit maybe to uh, some of the, with the younger audience might be a little more interested, some of the, uh, the unmade Spider-Man films. We'll, get, we'll fast forward to, uh, there, like I said, there were a few um, 70s TV shows. 
Uh, those actually did get, and again, you might say, oh, that's cheating to call that a movie if it's a TV movie, but they were theatrically released internationally, so they count. <laughs> they also had a Japanese Spider-Man movie. There was a Japanese show. I would have talked about that, but I'll, I'll get to some somewhat more interesting, I think, for the kids maybe stuff, is the uh, Spider-Man come the 80s, they wanted to make like American theatrically released films. And uh, one of the most famous, uh, one of the first ones that most of the time you'll hear about is Stan Lee actually wrote a, a whole script for a Spider-Man film. And it was actually, the, of all the early unproduced Spider-Man films, it was probably the most Spider-Man like accurate film. Obviously it was written by Stan Lee, so you kind of expect he'd probably do a better job of writing Spider-Man. Uh, the only weird stuff was that they're going to have some KGB kind of a love interest with a KGB agent and Spider-Man was going to like stop a thermonuclear war thing, you know, one of those things. Uh, but there was, Mary Jane was there, there was like a, a love triangle with like KGB agent, Mary Jane, Spider-Man. Um, and, and the rest outside of the like side Soviet story was going to be a normal Spider-Man, uh, a big part of it at the time was, you know, Stan Lee, he made Spider-Man, he loves Spider-Man. It was going to be way big budget uh, with some of the things he planned at the time. So, you know, superhero movies weren't like what they are now, so they're like, they're like no, we, we don't have that, it's not going to work. Uh, so then they had, is the Spider-Man for, and this was like around the 80s, Spider-Man they've been trying to make from 70s, you know, the, the very earliest were in the 70s, and in the 80s they had uh, Canon Films, I don't know if anybody knows Canon Films at all. Uh, they did such classics as Masters of the Universe and uh, Breakin and Breakin 2. <laughs> yeah, so, um, th yeah, they weren't, uh, they did a lot of like B movies. I mean, they did have some movies you may have actually heard of. Uh, what The Death Wish series, that was theirs. A lot of those Chuck Norris films or John Claude Van Damme, that was, that was them. Actually, mentioning uh, He-Man, that was part of what happened that kept Spider-Man from becoming a thing was uh, He-Man and Superman. <laughs> because they did uh, Superman, I think they, theirs was Superman 4, Quest for Peace, which didn't make the money they were hoping. And then uh, He-Man also didn't make the money, and they both kind of, so they, it was a financial issue. They didn't really have the money. Um, to, to make Spider-Man. But initially, they, it was, they were pretty gung-ho on the idea. They had uh, got, they'd even done a trailer, although it was one of those, you know, trailers where you see nothing, just like, here's a guy in a Spider-Man suit in black, and we're like a voiceover and some city scenes, but no actual filming of the actual movie had taken place. But uh, they had, they had like no idea what the heck Spider-Man was. They just were like, oh hey, we got these really cheap rights to this movie, let's make a movie of it. Because that's kind of how Canon Films was. They didn't seem to know a lot about what they were doing uh, when it came to the properties they bought. And the initial idea for Spider-Man was he was gonna be a literal Spider-Man. And the very first treatment for the film, uh, they Marvel looked at it and is like, do you have any idea what Spider-Man is or who he is or anything? And they're like, yeah, he's a Spider-Man, right? And they're like, no, that, no. So they did another treatment um, after that and that didn't get done either, fortunately. Uh, the, the next big one um, that is most often known is James Cameron had a Spider-Man he wanted to do. And uh, the James Cameron one, Actually, some stuff I can't talk about with that one. <laughs> with the kid, it, it was a little, it would have been R-rated, let's say that. Uh, Spider-Man would have definitely had a dirty mouth. And, uh, yeah, and other, so do you know, do you know about the Cameron one, or? You're yeah. laughing, so I'm like. No, I'm laughing because I can't believe he, <laughs> he yeah. would have a dirty mouth. Oh, uh, yeah, that, he also really weirdo, too, some of the, um, issues we can't talk about, but <laughs> there are other things that would have made it rated R. Well, violence was also, yeah, pretty much overall, everything that could make a movie rated R, it was going to be rated R for in this movie. 
um, and there were some very awkward moments with him and Mary Jane. Uh, some of the writing that, like, they didn't go through a full script, but they did a, a little treatment, um, like, about 30 pages or so. It was Some of the writing was, like, really bad. You're like, this is really odd. Um, so, I, definitely, you can, like, go Google, like, James Cameron Spider-Man script if you're really, like, <laughs> if you want a good laugh. Um, I mean, they had the whole, you know, there is still stuff I can talk about about how odd it was. Like, Spider-Man, when he gets his powers, he was going to, be, like, do a uh, street performance to make money, to earn money. Like, you know, first thing you do, oh, I have powers, I'll become a street performer. <laughs> I'll make all kinds of money. And, and then he was going to, because of his street performance, he was going to get on TV and be on, like, Carson or some, you know, like, like, yeah, Spider-Man on Carson as a, you know, this was still before he was like, I'm a superhero. And that's when uh, Electro, or their version of Electro and Sandman, were going to be like, oh, hey, look at that guy. He's a freak like us. We want him to join us. He can, um, Electro had electric powers that he could tap into like the computer and he you know stole information about companies and then it was almost kind of like Superman 2 with like you know he was gonna like manipulate the stock market like he was a you know kind of like oh we're selling off you know we're taking a few cents here and there kind of like a super like some like okay you could do, yeah it was a weird um, plot for a villain but yeah so he was like this rich person who Corporate espionage was kind of his thing, using electricity. Um, it was it was kind of odd. But he had the Sandman was his, was his henchman, and then uh, Spider Man. They're like, "Hey, join us! You're a freak like us. Be be one of us." And Spider Man's like, "No, I don't want to be bad." And they fight, and you know, that was kind of about it. Without you know getting to the you know, uh, there was more, but it was it was just bizarre. I definitely uh, suggest. Get the book and read about it, or check online and, and check on it. Um, but then, let's. So then, uh, the, the, the Raimi films, actually. Finally, we hit the Sam Raimi films. I'm sure everyone here's probably seen those movies, right? Uh, so, with Spider Man uh, 3, they actually at one point had thought about splitting that up. They wanted to do, uh, they had a lot of ideas. Actually, Sam Raimi didn't really want to do Venom. But one of the producers really did uh, was really gung ho on Venom. He'd been like really pushing for Venom, still is pushing for Venom. Uh, some of you may have heard they have announced there will be a Venom movie. They've announced quite a few uh, Spider-Man films that they're going to do, but at the same time they've done that before. <laughs> so and, until they actually start filming, I wouldn't really take anybody's word for it. <laughs> Making Venom, yeah, sure you are. Uh, but uh, in fact, speaking of Venom, there was one that um, I think one of my favorite. There were a lot of, like I said, Venom was something they've been trying even before uh, Sam Raimi film. There was another Venom film that almost was produced before any of the other Star uh, uh, Spider-Man films. Um, and that one, I won't get into that one right now. But the I think one of my favorite of all the Venom. Uh, movie concepts was uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, who was in? Now I can't think of his face. Um, in Twenty One Jump Street and Twenty Two Jump Street, he was in GI Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah, Channing Tatum. Um, and yeah, so Channing Tatum. Uh, and this is there's a lot of stuff. A, a lot. There are a ton of st uh, Spider-Man concepts for movies, like over thirty different undone movies post Sam Raimi that they were talking about. And a lot of the information um, that we have comes from the Sony leaks. If you guys remember that, uh, you know, uh, there was all that leaked info about all those emails they had that Sony had done that got leaked online. So we have a lot of information about what they were planning with Spider-Man and what some of their ideas for Spider-Man were thanks to those leaks. Uh, actually, in the book, I don't really quote anything directly from them because since it's a leak, well, I don't know what legal rights to quote anything. And, I mean, maybe it's partially faked. You know, I mean, I know they've done with other leaks. Well, some of this could be, you know, doctored. So we don't know if it's, you know, I don't want to quote anything that could have been doctored. 
though I don't know why, who cares? <laughs> who is going to the trouble of this? But who is going to the trouble of, of leaking anyway? So, but there are, uh, there are emails with Channing Tatum where he emails them and he emails some of the people at Sony and he's like, I had this idea for a Venom movie. It's going to be the best movie ever. And he's like, it's really actually interesting to see how he types. Because he has like all caps at different places. He also doesn't spell right, but that's okay. Um, it's kind of neat to see his, in real life, he is a lot like his characters. So I don't know how good of an actor he is, because it seems like he might just be playing himself in his movies. But he's just like, you know, he's like, I was checking on the internet, and I'm go I was going through threads, and I didn't find any stories, any ideas. No one's had this idea. I have this great idea. You guys just, you got to do this idea. It's going to be the best Venom movie ever. It's going to be so awesome. And the interesting part is, like, as far as I know, nobody knows what this idea was. Like, I, you don't, there are no emails that actually exist that anyone knows about that actually give his synopsis. There's just the email. I have this great idea. I am Channing Tatum. Do my movie. And, and then you have emails, though. You do have emails where the executives are, like, talking about it. Like, dude, we're going to do the, the Venom movie, the Tatum Venom movie. It's going to be great. This is going to be the best movie ever. And, like, looking at their, like, their emails, it's the same thing. Like, like his. Like, oh, Venom movie, it's going to be awesome. And, and no one seems to say anything about what's in it. What's going to happen? They're just like, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be the greatest movie ever. I am really curious about what in the world was the plan. And I'm also curious, did he tell some people in, like, person what was going to happen and they knew? Because I'm kind of under the impression nobody knew what his plan was. They're just like, okay, if you want to do this, we think that's a great idea. You know, you, you're Channing Tatum. You can do whatever. You make money. We don't care. I think that was kind of the situation, but it's really interesting to see. Uh, the, the leaks are very interesting to see what goes on in Hollywood. You see a lot of interesting things with that. And the, I, I'm sure by now we all kind of realize everybody's trying to get on the Marvel bandwagon. You know, I know that's been a lot. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of like the Justice League. Oh, DC's done a bad job. Why can't anybody do it? And you know what, as bad as, as DC has been at it, if you look at Sony, oh, they're so much better than Sony. <laughs> Sony's tried so hard to, you know, do the same thing. And obviously, like, they're, they're still trying. <laughs> they are still trying. Um, I don't know, part of me says, no, they've thrown in the towel. I mean, they, as you know, they've let, you know, Marvel use, you know, Disney's now able to do stuff. And they're like, you, <laughs> which is probably the best. I think that's the best thing. It's like, you guys don't know what you're doing. You shouldn't do anything. Just let them. Um, also, just not in the book, but it, as a side note with regards to the Sony leak, there is some great stuff about the Ghostbusters. If you're a fan of Ghostbusters, and if you're really disappointed in the like last Ghostbusters, the leaks are really informative. There's lots of stuff about what was going on behind the scenes. I definitely recommend that. Um, to anybody, uh, if you're interested in that, like Google it, go to WikiLeaks or wherever the leak is at, and read some of them. Uh, so I'm going to go back a little bit back in time now to uh, the the Japanese. I'm totally going all over the place. I'm trying to, like I said, I know with kids it's not as inter interesting, so I'm trying to keep it a little more interesting things. Uh, but let's go back to the. I think the Japanese TV show might be interesting. Uh, does anybody know about the Japanese Spider-Man at all? Okay, we got one person. All right. So, what what do you know? What can you tell us? Well, one thing I know about, about the Japanese adaptation is like um, they had like a, one of the things I noticed from the series like um, they had the wrist wear was like it was like all metal like around it and yeah. also oh um Spider Man had like a little robot with him that he's <laughs> controlling. Yeah, yeah. Um, he did have, and that kind of reminds me too. Another thing, the one thing about Cameron's script treatment that did make it in the movie was that it was uh. Cameron wanted to be biological. He wanted to have the web fluid just come naturally. And, and that's why with Sam Raimi, that's what they did. They liked that, so they kept it. And actually, in his version, Spider-Man made fake web shooters, 
So people, because he didn't want people, like there was this whole thing about being a freak and he didn't want people to think he was a freak. So he made fake web shooters that didn't work, even though he had real uh, ability to shoot out web. But yes, uh, in the Japanese, the Japanese had more of a sci-fi take to it. Uh, and what happened was Marvel got in a deal with Toei, Toei, I'm trying to remember how you pronounce it, Toei, to, how he said it probably. Toei. <laughs> like at one point I know how to pronounce it right. Toei uh, Studios, they did a lot of those mecha, you know, type shows like Power Rangers and that kind of thing. And they made a deal with, Spy with uh, Marvel so they could use Marvel's stuff and Marvel could use their stuff. Marvel used uh, some of their characters for the Shogun Warrior comics, if any of you know, remember those at all. Um, I think that was actually about it. <laughs> they didn't really use it much. Uh, and then Toei was going to use the original idea for the Spider-Man uh, to use Spider-Man was going to be a show about a actual Japanese historical figure, uh, actual, uh, not a samurai, the emperor, about one of the historical emperors, and he was going to go into the future and like live in present day or 1970s, you know, present day when they were doing it, Japan, and Spider-Man was just going to be like the side figure, and he was just in the mood, in the show with him, uh, but they ended up not doing that. They, they did say, uh, they told the people involved, they're like, you know, do whatever you need to. Like, this is Japan. Um, the Japanese culture is very different with certain things and how they do stuff. They don't often take to new things. Uh, so, and actually, that was one important thing that was really good about the show is in Japan, because of the TV show, the not just uh, the Spider-Man things, but all of Marvel is a lot better received over in Japan because of their exposure with the TV show. Uh, for instance, like DC, they don't care much, as much about Superman or Batman, but because of their exposure to the Japanese Spider-Man TV show, they liked Spider-Man, so it was kind of like the gateway to get into Japan. I, I don't think that was Marvel's intent at the time, but it ended up working out really well. Because um, they're, not just Japan, but even like in China, um, like, like Star Wars is not very big in, in China. Uh, you think it's big everywhere. Uh, they're Transformers. That's their thing. They're really into that. But um, so yeah, so it's it's hard to get in for Western audiences, uh, for Western media to really break into Japan. So they kind of were like, do your own thing with it. And so with, it's not at all the same story. It's not the same Spider-Man. Pretty much, he's in a costume like Spider-Man, except like you said, he had the the metal wrist bracelets. Uh, the bracelet, what it did is, yes, it did the, the swinging, the shooting, the web, which wasn't used very often because, like you mentioned, he had, the big thing was he had a giant robot. Yeah. And the robot, it was like a spaceship and then also become a fighting robot. And so he was just flying around in his spaceship most of the time. Yeah. There's no reason to like, you know, if you can fly in a spaceship or swing with webs, you just fly in a giant spaceship. So most of the time, he did that. Okay, uh, is that six minutes or oh, 15. just 15? I said the number that was like, okay. Um, so yeah, so uh, the Japanese Spider-Man, he had this big robot he called, they called Leopardon. And um, yeah, he was, it was an alien. The alien, uh, alien ship had crashed. His father, uh, Spider-Man himself was a race car, or not a race, he was a motorcycle racer. And that was his job. He was not a reporter, just a Japanese guy, not a, you know, it was in Japan, so everything was different. Uh, and they uh, had aliens were the enemy. It was this, now I don't remember the name of um, the en what they called them. It was very Nazi-like, though. Like, whatever the name was, it was like, yeah, it was kind of like Nazi-esque, like, aliens. And they did do a... a a movie in Japan. They did have a Japanese uh, movie of that, uh, but it was pretty much like a long version of a, of a TV sh episode. Uh, so let's see anything with that. So, oh, he, so he had the bracelet. The bracelet is what gave him, it was kind of like to turn into Spider-Man, he used the bracelet to shoot webs, he used the bracelet, and to get his spaceship, he used the bracelet. And uh, he got his powers also from a blood transfusion with the alien, and the alien was some 
spider thing. It was weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, the, the Japanese Spider-Man has only made it to the U.S. in like one comic uh, that they, they covered him in. So he hasn't really made it stateside. They don't really do a lot with him. Uh, so if you're like, I don't know this, yeah, he, he's not really been out there. Uh, and uh, so we don't have a lot of time. Uh, so is, are there any questions before? Anybody have any questions for me about Spider-Man or anything else? Yes? How did you start uh, your journey writing about Spider-Man? Was he like a childhood hero or um, no, I'm, I'm just much too... Uh, no, honestly, I mean, I like Spider-Man, but um, I'm an author, and I've written some other stuff, and, you know, I do write about pop culture. Um, yeah, I was actually going to pass this stuff. So here, here's the books I have with me today. I have uh, Extinct Attractions at Disney Theme Parks. I'm big into Disney stuff. That's kind of my... Um, one of the things I do. Disney Unbuilt, about uh, Disney attractions that they didn't make for whatever reason. A lot of time it was money. Sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes there were other reasons that they didn't, you know, like the Israel Pavilion at Epcot. They just decided maybe that wasn't the best idea uh, for political reasons. So uh, not necessarily money, sometimes. Um, and oh, this is actually a humor book, so not necessarily pop culture. I have an Atari book. Um, so I like pop culture in general. And uh, I, I do like comics. I'm a big comic fan. But uh, a lot of, and I'm not against spider I do like Spider-Man. And it was definitely really actually interesting to, uh, I definitely, I learned a lot while, you know, working on the book. You know, like I said, I actually watched a lot. Like, I didn't watch every episode of the Japanese Spider-Man. But I, I watched enough. <laughs> like I, I mentioned that 3Dev Adam. Yeah, yeah I, I watched that. <laughs> That's why I did it so you know not to waste your time. Just watch the, the five minute video someone talks about it instead. That's, that's a much better choice. Um, but so yeah, I, I do know a lot now. Uh, I mean, I already actually, a lot of that stuff I did. You know, I already knew about the Japanese Spider-Man. I already knew about the 70s. You know, so I already knew about a lot of that stuff. Probably just because I'm, like I said, I'm interested in pop culture. Uh, for my, for work, I, 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 both as an, I work as an author and I also do um, collectibles. I sell collectibles. So, you know, uh, most of what I do is Disney or uh, comics and things. So I already am in the, you know, Spider-Man. It's part of what I do. It's not, like I said, my main biggest I I area. But uh, what made me go with it actually is Spider-Man is the top merchandise in terms of, you know, he makes the most money of all the characters by a wide margin. So I was like, I'm going to do a book about, you know, comics because I love comics. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, Spider-Man is like the one most people like. So, so I'm with that. You know, I mean, I, like I like Superman. That's personally my favorite. That was as a kid. Um, I love Spider-Man. I've always been, I'm not an underdog fan. I guess that's part of like Spider-Man's kind of the underdog. You know, he's kind of a regular kid. That's boring. I want the, like, almost near godlike, you know. If I'm, like, watching the Olympics, I don't want the, like, I want the best people, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm not a big underdog fan. Uh, so, Spider-Man, you know, Superman is that massive, I'm super awesome. I also like the lighter, he's a lighter, you know, lighter world. Like, Batman is kind of the dark, and I'm not, I'm more in the, you know, brighter. And that's my, my take on the world is a brighter world, so... Um, Spider-Man, it kind of depends on what version you get, I guess, in terms, sometimes he's dark, sometimes he's lighter, you know, obviously like the 70s campy, even the Japanese 70s Spider-Man was kind of a lighter world, 